Okay, in this video, I am going to show you a number of editing techniques that you can use when making your montage uh, to construct time and to make things look a little bit more exciting and interesting and to add to audience engagement. Um, so these are the different techniques that I'm gonna be covering. Jump cuts, smash cuts, time lapse, whip pan, wipe by cuts, split screen, and I'm gonna be showing each one of these in iMovie and Premiere Pro. I will add the time codes for each one of those down the bottom in the description so you can just jump to the ones that you want to jump to and not have to watch the whole thing. Just before we start though, I just wanted to discuss um, that all of these uh, clips that I've used, that I've edited for this video, have been shot by hand using my phone. Uh, I held it in my hand, I didn't use a tripod, I didn't use a rig, I didn't use a, a gimbal or anything. Uh, just a couple of tips when you're shooting with your phone, make sure you dig your elbows into your ribs and keep your camera nice and stable. Um, make sure that you keep your phone horizontal, we're not shooting in portrait mode, we're shooting in landscape mode. Um, and this is my tripod, so you can see here I've just got a couple, I've got a tool, a stool, I've got a couple of hard books, flat books, um, balanced on top of the stool, and I've used a jar of peanut butter and a tin of baked beans to prop up my phone to keep it nice and stable. Uh, that's a, You don't need a tripod, that's what you can do when you're shooting your films. Okay, editing jump cuts in iMovie is one of the simplest techniques that you're going to do. Um, so what you what you can see here is I've shot the entire clip as one long thing. I've just put the camera up, press record and let it go and have my two kids watching TV on the couch. So the camera doesn't move but they do and I've rearranged them four times. All right. Um, so now it's just a matter of getting rid of the stuff the, where we're moving them around. Okay, so I'll, I'll just drag each one. Um, I'm use, So I highlight the clip and hit Command B and it's going to cut it. All right, then I'm going to move it until they're back sitting watching TV again. Command B, cut it, move it. Command B, cut it, move it. Command B, move it. If you move it too much or too little, you can always change it after we've after we're finished. All right, and then B B. Now we just need to go highlight the bits that we don't want and just hit the delete button. Delete, 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 and there we have. What I'm noticing is that each shot is too long. Right, the whole thing goes for 35 seconds and that's too much. So I can just drag each one of those back a little bit. If I zoom in, I can have a bit more. Uh, take each one back to, say, three seconds and see how that looks. Alright, it'll make it a much shorter, punchier little sequence. And wait, the effect is that you get, it's like they've been watching TV for a really long time, so long that they've, they've rearranged themselves four times. jump cuts in Premiere Pro and you can see there that I have just one piece of footage there so I've just put the camera in one spot with my kids watching TV so the camera hasn't moved but I've moved the kids like four times all right and then I've just now what I've got to do is just get rid of the bits that I don't want and tighten it all up um, so I can zoom in here to give myself a bit more space um, and I'm just going to use my trusty razor blade tool so I'm going to grab that razor tool and I'm just gonna snip it. I'm gonna snip it at the end of the first shot. I'm gonna move until after I've moved the kids and snip and snip again. I can be rough because I can always change things. All right, snip, snip. Snip. 
and snip. Now what I'm looking for, and then, then I'm just going to get my select tool and delete bits that I don't want, or if I right click and ripple delete, it'll stick them all together. So I'm getting rid of the bits that where I've moved the two kids. Ripple delete. Um, and then I need to just watch it and make sure that it's each shot doesn't go on for too long. So that's probably, you know, I'm looking for about three seconds a shot. And there, those ones are a little bit too long. So I'm just going to drag them to, to get them to a, be about three seconds each. Three seconds. Uh, three seconds, etc., etc. And then when I play it back, I've got the kids watching TV and it's like they've been sitting watching for a really long time. Like so long that they've managed to move themselves uh, three or four times. Okay, here I am editing my smash cuts in iMovie. Um, I've dragged them all into iMovie and I've dragged them all down to the timeline. Now the thing that I need, there's a couple of ways to go about doing this um, to make it effective. The first thing is you want them all to be, I've found about 30 seconds to be the best um, way to get these to kind of flow together really well. Um, so because if you're working with such small files, just make sure that you're zoomed in so you can see what each one looks like. And then you can drag from each end of the clip and you want it to end them, them all to end up for about 30 seconds, except for perhaps the first one and the last one. Um, the other thing that you need to remember when you're editing these is to, you want to kind of capture the action. So you want it to start when the action starts and you want it to end kind of before the action is completed. Okay, so you don't want, you don't want the audience to sit around waiting for the thing to happen to happen. Okay, so make sure that you try, when you're editing these, you try to get it just as the action is starting and, and ends before it ends. Now to add the little smash zoom into these um, smash cuts, and I'll show you, I've done a couple here so you can see how it smashes, it kind of zooms in really quickly. Um, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's possible to do this on iMovie. Uh, to do this, you need to make sure the clip is highlighted, um, go up to this kind of crop uh, symbol here and then we want to click on crop to fill and you want to zoom into the part of the clip that you want this zoom to end in okay um, so I'm going to just leave it put it zoom it into my son's mouth there and then I'm going to hit return on the keyboard and that will apply that crop to that entire shot then um, I need to cut this in half. So I'm just going to move the cursor about halfway along this shot, um, hit Command B to snip it in two. Then I want to highlight the first clip. I want to go back to that cropping um, tab. Um, and then I want to hit Ken Burns. Now this is where it kind of gets tricky. So you can see that bold line is where the clip starts and the jagged line is where the clip's going to end. So if I leave it at that, it'll zoom out. We don't want to do that. So what you want to do is click within the square of the end and make sure that that square becomes bold, which means it's highlighted. And then you want to drag that down so that it is the same size as that dotted line and in the same position. Okay. Then carefully click on these two words here to highlight the start position. And then you want to drag that box all the way out. And then with any luck, you'll see that that's applied that smash zoom just to that first part of the clip. And you've, if you've done it properly, it'll end 
at the point where um, the size of the clip that you did before you edited it um, is, that was totally unclear, but you understand what I mean. So here I am editing the Smash Cuts in Premiere Pro. Um, I've dragged all of my clips down here onto the timeline, put them in order, and what I'm doing is I'm editing each one so that they are about, you know, half a second to a second in length. You can see there that I'm starting to get a consistency in the length of each shot, so you want to keep them roughly about the same. And what I'm doing when I'm editing is that I want to start the shot as the action is starting to take place. So rather than before the milk is being poured into the cup, I'm gonna start it just as the milk is being poured in, right? and then I'm going to edit it, and I want to edit it, so about, like I said, about you know, half a second to a second as the action is taking place. And I'm seeing, you can see there that it's, it's about the same length of time as the other shots in the sequence. The only clips that won't be will be the first one and the end one. So if we cut that so it starts as the action is taking place, put all these together, and then press play. Right, I could even make them a little bit quicker. Uh, what you've noticed that I've done here for these first couple is I've got this smash zoom. All right, so it's really super quick, just happens at the start of each one of these shots. I haven't done it in this one, so I can show you what to do is we're gonna create a smash zoom. So in, I'm gonna select this clip. I wanna make sure that my editing tab is selected up the top of the screen here and I've got these motion effects that I can create. Um, I can use this slider here to move to make sure that the effect is gonna happen in the middle of the clip. And then I want to hit this little toggle animation button here in scale. All right, so it's creating a keyframe there in the middle of the clip, and that's going to create a little animation. And then now that I've got that selected, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, not too much. All right, and you can see there that what that does now is it's going to it's going to smash animate. No, sorry, what I need to do first is go to the start of that clip and then bring that back to a hundred. All right, now we'll get this movement, or it's a little smash zoom. See that again? Smash, smash. All right, I'll do it again for this one just to make sure everyone understands so I'll bring that into the middle of the clip I'll toggle animation create a keyframe in the middle I'll zoom in I can add a number there I can just use the slider to zoom in take it back to the start of the clip change that back to 100 and then I've created a little animation a smash zoom <laughs> Okay, here's my time lapse in iMovie. Um, I've I recorded for probably I don't know 10 minutes, and you can see here I've got 30 seconds worth of footage, um, which is a long time. So we want it to be even faster. So I'll highlight that, go up the top here to the speed, and I'll make it faster. I want to take it down to probably about 10 seconds. All right, super fast. Okay, we don't want it to take too much of our film. Uh, another thing you can do, you don't have to, if you want it to have a kind of a slow pan across it, um, with the clip highlighted, if you go up to uh, this crop selection here, go to Ken Burns, and tell the clip where you want it to start. All right, so preferably over the left-hand side of the screen, and then where you want it to end, you want your end, the size of your end screen to be the same as the size of your start screen so that it doesn't zoom, and then you want it to end. The, the, the transition doesn't have to be long.
Okay. Um, and then let us go. You see that we get this kind of slow pan across the whole thing. Okay, here I am editing my time lapse in Premiere Pro. Uh, if your screen looks slightly different to mine, it's probably because I am in the editing tab here. Uh, so I've got my time lapse down there on my timeline, and you can see it goes for over 30 seconds. We want to make that shorter. Probably one of the easiest, there's a couple of ways to read time in Premiere. Uh, I find the easiest way is over here on the toolbar. Uh, you probably have the ripple edit tool, but if you click and hold that tool, you'll find the rate stretch tool. Grab that and then you can just click and drag from the end of that. Um, and we want to get that down to about 10 seconds. We don't, we don't want it to take up too much time in our montage. So there are 10 seconds, time lapse, nice and quick. Now, if we want to add a little bit of a just a slight pan in that clip so the the scene kind of moves across the screen as it's going we want to first uh, grab the selection tool double click on our um, viewer window there and just make that a little bit bigger all right I'm gonna just drag that down as well because I want to see more of us people than the table so i'm going to position the frame where i want the pan to start and then i'm going to go over here to the motion effects and i'm going to toggle animation on position all right and what you're going to see you can see a little square pop up there then when i drag this over to the end and I double click on my clip there and I'm going to drag it across. And what you see there is you get this blue line, which is going to indicate how the clip is going to change over the course of that. All right. And then when I drag it back and forth, you'll see there that I've added a, just a slight pan across the clip as my time lapse continues. Okay, here I am in iMovie um, editing my whip pans. So you can see here I've got shots here. I've got to have my son whipping. The camera's going to whip from his face to the TV screen. Now how I've shot that, and I've got a little bit of video here to show you, is I'm literally kind of focusing on him and then moving the camera to the side away from him. Um, and then I've done the opposite towards the TV. So you have to make sure that the camera is moving in the same direction between the two shots. So it's literally a whip. Okay, so I've got this shot here where it's it's of his face and then it whips around. And then we've got a whip towards the TV. Uh, now, when you are editing these together, you want to make sure that you cut them like just mid-whip, right? As the camera is whipping Okay, so we want it to start moving and we want it to be really blurry. So I'll probably stop it there. Use Command B to split the clip. And then the same thing goes when we go on back to the TV. You can see there that I've, I've, I've got that whip and I want to edit it just as it's kind of whipping towards the TV. All right, and then if we play them together, we get that movement. That looks pretty sweet. All right, and I've done the same thing again here. So as I've shot the TV, um, I've whipped towards the TV, I've stopped for the Netflix logo, and then I've whipped back around in the opposite direction. So then when I've shot my son again, I've whipped from the opposite direction towards him. And then if we play that back, whoosh, all right. You can see there, if I do that, I could probably tidy that up because I get that little kind of pause in between whips. I just want to make sure that the, the camera is like moving really, really quickly when I cut it. The other thing you can do there to tidy it up a little bit as well is by editing in a cross dissolve, but you don't want it to be too long. So I'll put a cross dissolve in between each one. Uh, if I click on that cross, double tap on that cross dissolve, it's currently a second. I only want it to be small, like 0.2 of a second, apply to all, and then that'll just kind of blur those 
shots together just a little bit so you really don't see the cut. First I'm going to edit my whip pans in Premiere but before I do I just wanted to show you how to shoot them because that's what's important. So you can see here I'm shooting my son's face watching the TV and then I'm going to whip the camera away from him. So it's a really quick kind of whip, right? I really want that quick movement. And I'm going to do the same thing when I, it comes time to shooting the thing that it's whipping to, but, I, but I, I'm going to be doing it in the opposite direction. So if, if from one shot, if I'm going from left to right, I need to continue that movement in the same way. Okay, so here we are in Premiere and you can see here I have the shots that I'm going to be, this is the shot that you just saw me filming. You can see there it's my son's face and it whips away from him and then the next shot is whipping towards the TV. So when I edit these, I need to edit them so that it is the movement, right? So we, we're, we're, start, we're getting that whipping movement and we want to cut it during that movement and we want to get it as the movement continues in the next shot all right so now when we put those together we'll be able to see you can see it just kind of whips together but what you might notice there is you just see kind of a little bit of a transition where it whips from one shot to the next so i can fix that by adding a cross dissolve so to get a cross dissolve i need to go up and over to my effects panel i can start to type in cross dissolve in the effects uh, box and I can find it right there and with those two shots together side by side I'm just going to drag that cross dissolve down so it covers both of them and joins them together and then that one's a bit long I don't want it to be too long I don't want it to blend together I just want it to do it in that split second when the shots uh, transition together so I'm going to reduce that to 0 0.2 of a second you can see there that that's now really teeny tiny, but it just kind of takes that transition and makes it really smooth. Okay, here I am recording my white by cuts in iMovie. Um, and just before I show you how to edit that, uh, it's really important that you understand how you need to shoot that. Um, and here I have some photos of me looking like a bit of a doofus um, with Spongebob on the background but there you can see there I have my uh, phone set up on a chair being held up by a tin of baked beans and watch how I need to run past the camera All right, so I'm just doing a few different takes to get the right shot um, and notice that I'm actually kind of like moving quickly in front of the camera that's important if you move too slowly this will be tricky to pull off okay um, so we'll just get rid of that and here I have the footage of me moving past the camera um, I've already done one cut here so here I go past and then it cuts to a closer shot of my kids and this is the shot that I haven't edited yet so I'm just me running past the camera and my kid reacting we're gonna get rid of that so when I'm cutting um, I want to cut to where I'm just about out of frame all right so just in between kind of more of or about halfway let's go with halfway all right because what we're going to add here is a wipe transition so if I don't have a net transition in there you'll see that we get this kind of awkward cut you can kind of see just momentarily the the shots cutting together um, it's not smooth so we're going to go to transitions and we're going to choose wipe left or wipe right depending on the direction of the person who is moving in front of the camera and if I double click on this I can change the speed of that wipe and we want to get it as quick as possible so 0.2 of a second is as fast as iMovie will allow so I'm going to apply that and then hopefully what's happened you can see there is that that wipe is happening as I'm going past the camera. I could even probably slow that down a little bit and see what happens. Uh, so the wipe should be kind of wiping 
to the next shot as I'm walking past the camera. And if all things go well, it's like I'm wiping the next shot across with my bum. Okay, before I demonstrate um, how to do a white by cut in Premiere Pro, I just wanted to show you how to, you need to record this, this is really important. Um, so what you can see here is here, I have my camera set up on a chair being held up by a tin of baked beans. Um, and you'll see what I'm doing, I press record and I'm just going to jump in front of the camera. So when I'm going past the camera, I need to go really quickly, otherwise this will be really hard to edit. So you just so I, you, you can even kind of leap across in front of the camera um, to get this effect to work. And then what you see here is I've got a shot of my kids sitting watching TV, and then I've got I've just I've just done a few kind of jumps in front of the camera. All right, nice and quick. And the the reason why it needs needs to be nice and quick is because. If you're too slow, then you're going to have a lot more to edit to, right? You just want that, you just want to be dis past the camera in like a couple of frames. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that there. So just after, I'll just zoom in so we can see what we're doing a bit better here. Um, okay, so there I am running past the camera. Um, and then we're going to cut to the next clip, which is... Uh, another shot of my kids watching TV. Right, so we'll go from close to further away to further away. Um, now, that's not ideal, right? Because we can still see we can still see them sitting on the couch before it cuts to that the further shot. So what we want to do here is add a wipe. Um, now to do this in Premiere. Um, it, it'll work better if we use a linear wipe and to do this we need to stack um, the clips on top of each other because we're going to be applying a wipe just to this clip which will then wipe out to expose the, the clip underneath. Um, so what you need to do is open up the effects window, make sure you're in the effects tab, open up the effects window if you can't see it go to window, make sure effects is ticked and you're looking for linear wipe and when you have that, you can drag that straight down onto the uppermost clip. Uh, nothing will have happened yet at this stage. Okay, we need to then go into our effects editing controls, which are here. Um, make sure the clip that you've applied that linear wipe to is at the top of the stack there um, and highlighted. And then you can see the, the controls for that there, um, nothing has been added yet so you won't see any effect. Uh, first thing we need to do is change the wipe angle to, let's let's just turn this on so we can see the effect taking place. All right, um, now we need to change the wipe angle. So it starts at 90, we wanna get it over to 270. Then we want to tell Premiere when to start the effect and when to edit it. So we'll start at um, zero and we will move the shot until I'm starting to move across the frame there. And then we're going to hit that toggle animation and drag this up until the wipe starts to hit my bum okay there um, and then we are going to go drag this up until I am off the screen which will be the end of the shot um, we're going to make sure that that clip is highlighted um, and then drag that to 100% and now with any luck All right, you can see it following behind me there, all right? But I just need to go back to this stage here and turn that to zero. So you can see that wipe's gonna follow 
along. You can see the you can see the white pretty clearly there, um, but when we play it quickly, you won't be able to notice it as well. The other thing you can do there is add some feathering to it, so that'll create a bit of a blur between the over the white. All right, and then with any luck, if we play this back, right, it shouldn't be as obvious. A split screen in iMovie. I have two shots here of, of my son drawing, uh, one from further away and one in close up. And I am going to drag one of those down the bottom there, um, and then I'm going to take the other one and drag it and place it over the top in the timeline. And what should happen when you do that is you'll get this uh, overlay box here. Um, with, which gives you the option to drop down that menu and choose split screen. And it'll ask you, do you want to do it? You can, and of course you can do it this way. You can have it on the left and the right, or you can have it on the top and the bottom like this. Um, that's as, it's as simple as that. The only thing you need to be aware of is when you are recording, you need to make sure that the vision that you want on the screen is right dead in the center of the of the frame because you can see there if I had the camera up too high or up too low I wouldn't be able to see my son's face and I wouldn't be able to see what he's doing Here I am in Premiere Pro editing my split screen. So I've taken two shots of my boy drawing. Um, and when I've taken these shots, notice that I've kind of taken them far away so that he only takes up half the height of the frame. So there's one from far away and there's one of a bit of a close up. Now I'm gonna be cropping these and they're gonna be quite narrow. So just make sure that what you can see within the frame is going to not get chopped out when you crop it. So I want to make sure that these two, I've dragged both of them onto the timeline where one's on top of the other. And then what I need to do is make sure that I'm in the effects uh, tab and you should have this effects window open here. If you don't, you can just go to window and just check that effects box. And then we wanna look for the crop tool. So you can just type that into the search engine there. It'll pop up with crop and you can drag that down onto the clip on your timeline that you are going to crop. And then with your effects controls open on the side here, you'll see that you get uh, controls here to crop. Okay. Um, and what we want to do is crop from the top and the bottom. So I can just click and drag that and you'll see what happens to my clip. It's going to start cropping it. And so I'm going to drag from the top and drag from the bottom until it is about half the height of the frame and then I can just adjust that all right when I'm happy with that I will get out of that crop um, highlight the clip double click on it and I can drag that around on the timeline and I want to drag I want to adjust the bottom one as well because so I can see his draw he drawing at the same time all right, and then when I play it back, they should work in tandem and it looks like the same thing is happening at the same time. <laughs> 